Thank you so much, everyone, for coming tonight to Pasadena Photography Arts Open Show. We are incredibly thrilled that you're here with us tonight. And I want to first give a moment of pause for the two tragedies that we just have had in our country for Atlanteans um, and our people in Boulder, who we just need to take a moment of pause and hope that we can all solve this problem in a very, very quick and timely manner. Let's just give a moment to everybody who's passed. And that brings us to our show. And we're so grateful that everybody can be here tonight. Um, I'm talking to a screen and I need to see who's here. Um, anyway, so our mission is to bring a greater awareness to photography for the, to bring community, to bring you photography. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I just got nervous. So We're all good. Uh, Pasadena, thank you. Pasadena Photography Arts. Here we are all together tonight. And I wanna to bring together these five amazing artists. We have Gershon, Gershon from RIT, who's bringing amazing no, work that will Granville. inspire, sorry, Granville, <laughs> who will inspire us to be better people. All of the, our artists tonight will do this. Anyways, tonight we are grateful that you are here and we need your help to keep these programs don't alive and well. I just got so incredibly nervous. That my is friends. okay. Basically it's we're keeping PPA free and through your donations, um, we are able to also have this amazing opportunity for an artwork raffle. Uh, and so tonight, one of these unique prints from our featured artist could be, be yours. yours. Um, the link will be shared in the chat momentarily. And they will share their work after every presentation and they'll hold it up. And I'm, honestly, <laughs> it's amazing work. So we are here because of you and they're here because, because we're, we're all, all here. here together to share this work. So you can find more about us on Pasadena Photography Arts through Facebook and Photo Arts and our website and just a little business. We wanna make sure that everybody's muted during the show. The most important thing that we can do is to chat, is in the chat, put your questions. We really wanna do questions and answers in real time. So we'll be looking and bringing them forward. The, it is recorded, so please be mindful of what you're wearing. If you're not, if you decide to leave, remember to wear your clothes. <laughs> and we will go on to the show and here's Debbie. Thank you guys for that introduction uh, and our advisors that are here tonight. Thank you so much for, for this space that we've created for artists to show their work, to share their work. Uh, we couldn't be here without all of you on both sides. Uh, tonight is the second part of our Inspire and Elevate show that we have put on for you for Open Show. And the reason that I chose this topic is because we've had such a difficult year that we know, and here we've had another glimpse of, of things that have been happening in another way. It's been a catastrophic year that's been filled with fear and illness, division, discourse, but it's also invited inclusivity and diversity and a union in many ways. The artists that, uh, that we selected for part one and part two, all are contributing from their hearts, their minds, their spirits, and, and their, their generous talent. And, and I thank them all again for, for being here. We need your submissions in order to be able to do this. And so we thank you all and thank you all for attending as well. Uh, our first artist is Granville Carroll. And uh, I'm introducing Granville first. We're so happy to have you here. Uh, what, what we started doing, you know, everything is evolving with uh, Zoom and the pandemic and how we run things. And we've got four artists from California and then one uh, that's outside of, of our boundaries. And Granville's joining us from Rochester, New York. And uh, he is a teacher at RIT. One of the cool things that just happened recently with Granville is he is one of 47 inaugural silver list uh, uh, recipients. And they are there, it is mentioned that they are exciting contemporary photographers whose work you must you must see. And so how fortunate you are that you would get to see Granville and thank you, Granville. 
uh, and, and I just want to say quickly that Granville and I met because of the pandemic and the way how inclusive we can bring us together. We just reached out uh, how I had seen his work in, in fun ways and uh, we get more comfortable reaching out to people in, in ways and, and that are different. And so because of the pandemic, I think that we have that, that relationship and connection. Uh, Granville Carroll is an Afrofuturist photographer with roots in the West Coast. He was born in Riverside, California. He grew up in Washington State and he lived in Arizona for seven years before moving to Rochester, where, as I mentioned, he currently teaches. His practice involves photography and digital manipulation to create new realities and identities. A fun fact is he is the sixth of seven children and he's been to 13 different schools. Uh, Granville is going to recite an original poem uh, over this first pass of his work. Unlike the other participants, when we first show their work, you'll be viewing it in uh, silence. So Granville, please welcome, we welcome you. All right. Well, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction and thanks everyone for coming. Um, so as Debbie mentioned, I will be reciting a poem that I wrote last year, uh, which I just titled Blackness Together. All right, so here we go. <clears throat> Blackness is born. Blackness dies. Blackness reforms. Blackness rise. Spilling, splashing, covering all. Open your senses, hear the call. Blackness together, black evolves. Absence of light, colors combined. We are everything entwined. Black is, black isn't. Flowing, curving, bending its form. Morphing, colliding, conjuring the storm. Breaking, building, changing. Movement, time, only space remaining. Blackness. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Um, and so tonight I will present to you guys a new body of work, which is also a work in progress um, called In the Finite Infinitely. Um, and so for those of you who may not be super familiar with Afrofuturism, I just wanna sort of explain what that is. Um, and it's, it's a cultural movement that uses science fiction, the imagination, technology, and of course, thinking about the future. Um, to redefine the black identity. Um, and so I use this as a framework for my practice um, so that I can imagine new realities, new worlds and new identities um, beyond just what we experience in our day-to-day -day lives. Um, so this project here in the finite infinitely um, is it takes a look at the inward expansion of self through the outward expansion of the cosmos. Um, and there's a lot of influences that um, that play into the work itself. And one of them, the most recent one that I came, came to is uh, the transcension hypothesis. Um, and it's this really deep scientific um, theory, which I'm not a scientist, but I am using it um, as my own sort of, I don't know, influence to think about the ideas of inward self. Um, and so the transcension hypothesis, uh, it, it speaks about, um, the idea of advanced civilizations and the reason why we don't see them. So it tries to explain the Fermi paradox um, and says that instead of outward expansion of the cosmos, that advanced civilizations actually go inward. Um, that as matter and energy um, become denser and denser, it creates a black hole essentially in which then these civilizations enter into. Um, so it's a theory about evolution and, and development. Um, so as an artist, I'm taking my liberties with it to think about the evolution of ourselves internally. Um, and what does it look like to actually dive into the self um, and to create that black hole um, so that we can sort of experience something that's beyond just the physical. Um, and another aspect that was super inspiring was um, a book by Michael Crichton called Sphere. Um, and it's it speaks about this fear, this alien ancient object um, that 
will manifest your deepest desires or your deepest fears. And I wanted to um, use that as a mechanism to understand my own fears, my own desires and how those manifest in the world. Um, and also, you know, just collectively how that, how that exists for all of us. Um, and so then I started thinking deeply about circles and what do they represent? Um, and circles representing the spirit and the cosmos, um, the beginning and an end. Um, and the circles is what unifies spirit and matter as well. Um, and then of course, you know, you think of a circle and you think of cycles, right? Um, so this project started uh, after the pandemic happened. I didn't really wanna make work that was directly related to COVID, um, but of course we don't work in a vacuum and there were, you know, things that happened in the world that influenced my thinking. Um, so I started thinking a lot about uh, death, of course, um, thinking about life, um, the gratitude for it, um, and then also just, you know, what is that next stage? Um, you know, after this body is gone, you know, where does our energy go? Um, and so it's an it's a investigation of existence and non-existence um, and the body acting as a conduit for these forces that exist in the cosmos um, and the search to sort of understand the origins um, of ourselves and then where we will go next. Um, so like I said, it is a work in progress. So things are changing, things are morphing. I'm being influenced by a number of different things. Um, you know, and then I guess one other aspect is um, reading the, uh, what is it? The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Um, you know, and it's like, what is the, the ultimate answer to life? Um, and I'm sorry if, spoiler alert for anyone, but they say that the answer is 42. And they're sort of thinking like, well, what does that mean? Um, you know, and it's like, sometimes we're not actually asking the right question. Um, so I think it's important to sort of think about that in, you know, the larger spectrum of life itself. Um, and what is the actual question that we should be asking? Um, and maybe it's, it's not an answer that we need, but, you know, the right frame of mind to think about, um, you know, possibilities. Um, so yeah, so that's a little, a little bit about the work. Uh, so if you guys have questions, uh, comments, I will open that up to you guys. Thank you so much, Granville. And excuse, we're having some screen issues. So we apologize for that so very much. And sometimes technology just takes over and we, uh, we hope you understand. Um, Granville? How, how yes. do you, like this particular photograph that we're looking right at, at the moment, how, how are you constructing this? Mm. Yeah, so the process is, it's not really complicated, but it does take a long time. Um, so usually what I do is I begin with a landscape image or what I like to call it my blank canvas. Um, so when I'm thinking about photography um, and my practice as a photo manipulator, um, you know, I, I see myself as a co-creator of reality. You know, I'm using the indexical aspects of photography, you know, photographing something that is real and that exists in the physical form, but then imagining something new with it. Um, so I start with a blank canvas, which is a photograph, usually a landscape. Um, and then I start to build into that space. Um, so it, with this one in particular, uh, this is just grass that I had photographed. Um, and one day I had lit an incense and um, I was looking at the smoke and how the light was catching, catching on it. And I just thought to myself, wow, that's really, really quite beautiful. So then I took out my camera, started photographing the smoke and the wispiness and the movement. Um, and this was actually one of the first images that I made in the series. Um, so then I took this mandala circle that I created um, and used the smoke as sort of this, um, you know, as a way to sort of conceal certain aspects of the image, but then also have this idea of revealing. Um, so it's just layers upon layers upon layers in Photoshop, um, where I'm using mostly my own images, but also appropriating some images from NASA, uh, Hubble telescope, um, such as what you see on the body itself. Um, that's, that's galaxies and, and nebulas and, you know, cosmic gas and stuff, um, that is photographed, you know, with deep space technology. Um, so yeah. And are you using, you're using your self portraits? So you, you're doing your own, you're using you a lot, um, always, or do you have other people step in at times? Um, so everything that I've done so far has just been myself. 
Um, I, you know, I was, yeah. So self-portraiture for me is, it's obviously, you know, in some way about my identity, right? Um, but more so it's just using my body as, like I said, as a vessel or a conduit. Um, so the hope is that even though it's a representation of me physically, that others may be able to see themselves reflected in these spaces as well. Um, so I, I do have an idea for a project where I want to maybe involve other people, mm -hmm. uh, but there's some, some things that I wanna sort of work out before I, I release that to the world. <laughs> um, but yeah, currently right now, these are self-portraits um, embedded in these landscapes, these, these unrealities. And we have a question from Bill Wishner. Bill, mm -hmm. are you able yes. to unmute yourself? <laughs> yes, I unmuted myself. Uh, Granville, I hope you can hear me. Um, yes. the, I have a question. How, does, how do you think your work relates to uh, the metaphor uh, represented by the monolith, you know, which is portrayed uh, primarily as a black monolith, as seen in the movie, obviously, 2001, and more recently, uh, appearing here and there in our world and, and taken down pretty quickly. The monolith, it, it rep, I guess rep, the, the metaphor of the monolith represents our universe and our, our being. We, we don't know how the two are intertwined. And I was wondering if you had any thoughts about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really excellent. I've never, yeah, I've never thought about that until well right now. Um, but the monolith, you know, I think, as I think about you know these references that you that you point out, um, it's just the unknown, right? Um, so it's this this device, this architectural piece, you know, that comes from some from somewhere. Um, and what is what is the function of it? You know, we don't fully understand or know, um, but yet it wields knowledge. Um, it it provides access to evolution and development. Um, and so you know, I think in terms of my work, that is what I want people to get from it, um, is to be able to, again, see themselves reflected um, and how they can sort of evolve beyond just their physical forms. Um, to see the power of the cosmos sort of embedded in their nature as well. Um, and to understand that the unknown, though yes, it's scary sometimes, um, that it's actually quite necessary um, for us to actually grow and, and evolve and develop um, both mentally and I think physically in some ways as well. Um, yeah. And we have, thank you. Thank you for that, Bill. And Bill is uh, uh, our, our uh, wonderful founder, founder of uh, PPA. So thank you, Bill. Uh, we have some messages on the side. Let's see, Maureen Vaughn says, so, so great, unique, uh, great, unique work. So refreshing, can't wait to see how you develop your projects. And Ian Wright, an RIT student, go RIT. Uh, Woohoo, go Granville. Uh, <laughs> shout out to RIT. Uh, Peter Mertz, our, our previous presenter uh, with Inspire and Ballet uh, uh, Elevates, says, I love the layering of the scale. Um, and we have time for one more question if anybody has any questions or thoughts, or if there's anything in particular you'd like to share, Granville. Mm -hmm. Actually, two more. We actually have two more. Laura, please, we'd love to hear from you. Oh. I, when I look at these images, I, I, I see um, a story I, and I hear sounds and I wonder if you, when you create them, do you listen to music and do you um, perhaps have thought about combining these with, with, um, with uh, musical pieces? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so music is a really important part of my process. Um, so the two, two of my favorite artists um, are India Ari um, and Trevor Hall. And they really inspired me to, um, to look at self, you know, deeper than just the body and, and to think more metaphorically. Um, and I have begun to think about these images more in line with sound. Um, so the poem that I actually just recited for you guys, I started working on a moving image piece where I'm actually going to layer that poem. Um, yeah, the, yeah, the poem itself will be recited. And then, uh, you know, these images will actually be activated and animated in, in slight ways, subtle ways, um, so that it all sort of comes together. 
Um, and then speaking with uh, my friend Gwen, actually, um, she recommended that I put in some sound as well. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm experimenting a little bit with some things. So we're working towards it. But it's very sensory for sure. I mean, we, we can get that, you know, the visuals, you can feel it. And, and it's spiritually minded. It, it touches, I think, all of all of the elements and facets. And I, I commend you for the work that you're doing because I think that you are, are moving in a direction that can touch us in ways that maybe we don't quite know yet. And uh, mm -hmm. I thank you. I thank you. And I, I wonder if you can show us the, the artwork. I understand that you have two, two pieces that you're donating to one lucky winner. Yes. Yes, so um, I have this piece here, which is Ordi, uh, which is a piece from my thesis work. Um, so this is eight and a half by 11 paper, um, eight by eight inch uh, image size. And then I have this other print um, also on the same type of paper. It's eight by 10 image size. Um, and this is called Our Deepest Fear. Um, so again, sort of getting at the, the power that we possess and, and to actually activate it and use it. Um, you know, to the cosmos. So yeah, I got these two pieces. Thank you. Thank you, Granville. And so we're, Lexi's going to put in a link if you haven't already uh, put a donation in, if you would like to be a part of the raffle. The event is free, but if you'd like to be part of the raffle, we ask for a donation that supports PPA and the programming that, that we offer for everybody. So that will keep coming up. Uh, thank you again, Granville. We appreciate you being here. Uh, our, so our next artist is Gershon Kramer, and uh, Gershon lives and works in Los Angeles. He graduated from the Tisch School of Arts in New York University with a Bachelor of Arts degree. He was born in Lima, Peru, and he became an American citizen in 2007. Fun fact, Gershon has been a Freemason since the age of 25. He was initiated, passed, and raised to the sublime degree of Master Mason at the Lodge Jose de San Martin, number 36, Grand Lodge of Peru. He was later affiliated to the Lodge Peace and Concord, number 445, not 446, Grand Lodge of Scotland. He is inactive at this time. Hold all your questions until later because we're going directly to his amazing art. Thank you for being here, Gershon. Thank you. And Gershon, may we have you come and explain your work to the viewers? Yes. Um, <clears throat> well, this is all work from, um, this is um, a series that I actually started in 2016. And, uh, most, and, it's just, and it was completely redone in 2020. I, um, everything that I did before late 2019, I erased and I started fresh. And, well, this one that's showing right now is called Goodbye. This one is called Automaton. 
Um, and basically, you know, uh, since the pandemic started, even though this predates the pandemic, the series, parts of the series, um, it was the only way that I could produce because I um, was not able to shoot anymore in my studio. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it actually, 2020 by accident became a very productive year. Uh, this one's called the uh, Bolkonski. Um, Bolkonski is a character from uh, Tolstoy's War and Peace, uh, Prince uh, Andrei Bolkonski. And there's a very moving scene at the end of the novel when he is dies, his, this, the description of his death and uh, accompanied by a friend of his, Pierre. And that paragraph that describes his death in, is, really gives you a feeling of the, trans, the transcendence of that moment. And, um, and this is a, a joke in a way on that because to stretch your leg in Spanish in Peru, estirar la pata means to die. Uh, this is a composition in orange and red. Um, uh, this is a, a piece done later in 2020. Uh, and I was, I was experimenting more with transparencies and using them to emphasize. And um, I mean, this, this, this process for me has been very interesting because my work has mostly been about the body. Um, and uh, here's uh, for the first time and, and, and a way to you know, how expressive can it be, how you can transform the body into something else. Um, except that is not just a naked body, that is a movement, that is a gesture. And um, when I started covering the body, um, it, 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 it's almost like a negation of my previous work, but done in an um, aesthetic way, I guess. Um, this one is uh, just called construction. Uh, and this one is also called construction. It's the same theme. Um, and again, it's transforming the body into something else. This is the second piece I did on the series. This print this is a 60 by 40 by 45 inch print, which was exhibited at Photo LA in early 2020 before the pandemic hit. This one and, and uh, the, the first one of the series. This one's called Face. Right, this one is untitled. And this is, um, this for me is very interesting, this, this, this person. Um, and I, I, when I first started working on, on this series, uh, you can see right behind me, there's a large um, blue photograph with the same sort of censorship on the face. And uh, next back there, there's a smaller one of a, a amputee also with the same kind of uh, red line. Um, the, this is something that's left over from the period from 2016 to 2019 of the series and which, uh, which started as um, censorship of the identity of the subject and letting the, 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 the picture make you express and make you feel something just through movement, but no, no, no expression whatsoever. And this is a trans woman um, that uh, I, I, I thought she was just this, what a beautiful figure, what a beautiful image she made. And um, it's this, and this is called Hermes Aphrodite. Beautiful. This one's called play. What's it called? Play. To play. 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 As in playing, and it's uh, it's, it's me playing pretty much um, with this image, uh, transforming the, the image of the body into something else. Um, in, in a way, it makes it more mysterious. It. Um, you know, I, 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 it makes you feel before you understand. And this one's called Priestess. And a lot of these um, images have to do, 
it also reminded me of this quote in um, in Exodus um, that you know, God uh, speaks uh, says that you know no person may see my face and live. So there is a thing about you know the the. Um, The, the, this holiness, which is, you know, which is hidden behind this veil. You know, this invisibility, that there's only a hint here. Uh, here is a construction, this is called reclined node. Um, and again, it's a construction with shapes and colors and is the hand lets you, you know, uh, suggest something, you know. This mystery behind the shapes. Where did the shapes come from? How, the shapes, I, I'm a very lazy artist. I'm super, super lazy. So I, I like to do things the easiest way possible. Um, the shapes, I made them with, um, yeah, with uh, what is this called? This program is very simple program. It is called window, uh, uh, it's a Mac and it's called preview. So the shapes come from preview. And what I do is I take the, the photograph and a, a TIFF, a digital TIFF on, oh, this one's called Seated Nude. Um, and this is an interesting, you, you notice that this is the first, the, the only time you might see a location, an actual location that I'm outside of studio. This is very rare of the, since 2012, I, must, I don't know how many shoots I've had, but uh, I went, I left my studio maybe three or four times. And this was one of those times um, to shoot at this, um, this collaborator uh, that I worked with a few times called, uh, who's also a fantastic photographer herself uh, called Shelby Diamond. And um, so we shot that in, I decided I wanted to shoot in her apartment. And um, this is her room, which had no bed. And she slept at her boyfriend's. <laughs> and, and, and this is a picture of her sitting on that chair. But again, it is, um, I, I, I decided to take everything out except the white of the walls, uh, the gray of the, carpet and just to give a hint of what is happening besides the title of seated note, you see the two, two legs of a chair. But it, it, this tells you a lot. Um, this one is called steamship. And again, it's just, you know, it's, it's a blue, it's this blue and then this gesture with the hands. And um, I mean, it, it, just the, 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 it was the, for me. It was the most important, the most I mean, uh, interesting part of the picture. So, Gershon, for most of the photographs, do you photograph the nude first? Do you pre-visualize? Yes. If you go to my website, you will see other series because I work in different series. And if you go to Void, for example, those are photographs that are not uh, intervened in any way. I but I do tend to intervene photography uh, and um, if we could go, is it possible to go back one? Yes. Thank you. Um, because I, I am, I'm interested in, in seeing where this can go. Uh, you see behind me also I have this sculpture is um, life size, it's called Three Graces and it's a lenticular. And this was done at a time that I was more optimistic. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the sense that I, I, I actually spend money to make this. <laughs> it's, it's interesting to see how you've changed your work because you were telling us this was a lot of this was shot early on, you know, 2016, and it's taken the pandemic for you to pull out your work, which a lot of us have done. I'm and not, yes, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Please. Well, you you're you're removing you're removing the work that you created, yes. and by taking away the information you are, which is what we've had in the pandemic, right? We've had so many things taken away mm -hmm. and been limited and constricted. And with that becomes some new kind of freedom, a new perception. 
and yeah. and you're 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 giving us that in in terms of transformation. You're calling calling them construction, and yeah. and you're yes. su being suggestive. Maybe you could talk a little bit more about that. Yes, I would like to. We could go back one. I'm sorry again. <laughs> and, and this is again. This was called the prophet, and this is re related again to that quote from uh, Exodus. You know, non, you know the whole the, the, this idea of sacredness. Uh, you know, uh, outside of the profane's eyes. So here again, the gesture of pointing to the heaven, which you see a lot of John the Baptists, uh, always uh, in, in, in Renaissance or Baroque paintings, always pointing like this. So I, I, I thought this was a fantastic gesture, pointing to the heavens and pointing at the, at the viewer. Um, we can go to the next one. So, uh, Gertrude, yes. So your subjects are they friends are they people you just meet on meet are, who are your who are your people that uh, well um uh, this one's called uh, what is this is a what is this called <laughs> damn it I the title of that one. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow but, uh, it was related the title it was untitled and then the title came to me the other day and i named it and i forgot it no but anyway, it's on the website. Uh, I'm sorry, what was the question again? It was about your models. How do you, how do you find oh, people that you want to shoot? Okay, well, um, uh, Instagram has been very, very helpful. Um, especially the, la the past couple of years, a lot of uh, people have approached me uh, from Instagram that want to be shot by me or I've approached people that I thought were interesting and uh, asked them if they would like to work, you know, to collaborate on something. So um, yeah, Instagram has been wonderful. Um, I, um, I have a very professional relationship with my subjects. I, there's some that I work with repeatedly. There's one subject that I've shot 32 times, uh, so, and every time it's something different and interesting. Um, this one's called Atlanta, Atalanta, which is um, a Greek um, mythological uh, figure. Um, she was a, a very um, famous athlete and um, and a very fast runner. So uh, she was uh, challenged to a race and I forgot who she was racing against, but he got these golden apples that he would throw on the floor and she would stop to pick them up. And she, she threw three golden apples to slow her down and won the race and, was a, and married her. So anyway, At Atalanta. Where, where do you want this work to go? Is this something that you continue to work on or do you feel it's finished? Well, um, I don't know. I haven't done, I haven't produced anything in about five months. Um, I haven't been able to for some reason. I just kind of stopped. I think that this series at this moment is a little bit exhausted in the sense that uh, I, don't, I, 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 I can't find anything new to do with it uh, or anything that could be surprising, just a repetition of the, the same the, the idea. So um, I, I haven't found what to do next yet, but I, I'd like to do something that is um, surprising. I think it will be. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for your work. Uh, if you could show us, your, you've got a painting that you're going to be donating. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, another result of the pandemic is that I started to paint. And uh, this is my first oil painting. It's called The Boxer. Um, it's 18 by 24, 24 by 18, I believe. Yes. And um, yeah, I mean, I. I I, I started, there was a moment that I had a space above me that I could use and um, I, me and my wife used it as a painting studio. Uh, unfortunately, uh, it's gone, but uh, we were, uh, you know, since I couldn't shoot, I, I, I tried 
you know, my, my hand at it and uh, it was fun for a while, but I have to maybe restart that, who knows. Thank you. Well, that's what happens when one area in our lives closed down, another area opens up for different productivities. So we thank tried. you. <laughs> yeah. And and Bill, we'll get to your question uh, toward the end. We're gonna we're gonna move on. Thank you so much, um, Gershon. Uh, our next presenter is David Freeman. David Freeman's mission is to create a greater awareness through photography of how we as a country are dehumanizing those living in abject poverty and in homelessness. David is a Long Beach based artist whose work explores the human condition, how they live, how their identity goals and advocates uh, for the humanity of all people. I think I messed that up, sorry guys. Um, David, now 79, has presented in numerous exhibitions in LA, Long Beach and the Orange County, as well as publications, TV shows, documentaries, podcasts, and charitable events. We're gonna show you a short film of David's work and then uh, he's going to recite some work, uh, some, some script that he's written for his, his beautiful work. Please enjoy. How do you think Long Beach takes care of you? as a city, as far as uh, your it situation. It doesn't? No. I don't want to come back here in a year and see you kind of gone downhill. I want you to go up there. They're not supposed to take our stuff and throw it in the dumpster. They're supposed to take our stuff and put it in storage or a form of storage facility. They don't, they throw it all away. And you can't get a job because if you leave your stuff, they come by and take it from you. So how are you gonna get a job if you ain't got no clothes or nothing to wear? Once you're homeless, I mean, you're out there and it's hard to get back, you know what I mean? Um, and a lot of people, you become the enemy of everybody. Please help us. Right, right. Please, please. You, 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 you be out here in the home. Thank you, David. I'm going to transition to your images. And you're on mute. If you could unmute yourself. Thank you. Well, nice to be here. Uh, thank you for uh, for showing part of the film. And uh, the videographer is actually uh, tuned in tonight, Grant Grant White, who's uh, uh, did a wonderful job. And uh, we're both very proud of uh, what what how what came out of it. And uh, but. Um, I'm going to leave the cosmos for a while and uh, take you to the street and uh, meet some people that are really invisible, sadly in invisible. But uh, many people ask me why I do what I do. I would like to read something that I wrote for tonight's series. When the sunlight shifts, to darkness is when the loneliness and emptiness absorbs one's mind. Another day of raw existence with no place to go. Will darkness bring peace or more unexpected assaults and criminalization on my humanity? Will I be threatened, robbed, molested as I attempt to sleep on the cold cement. Maybe tomorrow will bring the sunshine of hope and new discovery, the unexpected smile from someone passing by, a handout, a heartfelt opportunity for another chance. But most people just walk by like I am invisible. I am better than this and my country must do much better. The problem is homelessness. 
It cannot be solved unless we first understand that everyone must have access to a place called home. The one thing I wish people understood about homelessness is how far reaching it really is, how it destroys the dignity of human beings, plus how many aspects of each of our daily lives are impacted by it. Yet the decisions we make every day to keep homelessness in America with no end in sight. Uh, this is Michael. Uh, uh, it's hard to imagine that you could walk up and ask this nice man, actually, if I could take your photo or whatever. But uh, uh, the first time I visited with Michael, he was asleep under a bus stop with his pants halfway down. Uh, defecation was uh, surrounding him and uh, he wore no underwear. His looks are intimidating, strong features, and a totally penetrating look. Uh, he believes that he is unqualified for help. They keep turning me away. Once, once I gave him some money for a burrito, I then asked him if he would take 10 steps next to a wall so I could take a different type of picture and he said, I can't move. My feet will not take me there. I looked down at his feet. They were all sores. Uh, they're open. Uh, it was unbelievable. So, so I went across the street and got him a burrito. And uh, uh, it's a, a perfect example of what happens to a person that sleeps on the street for, for too many years of his, his, their lives, and he's still there and uh, eating burritos. Okay. Did someone has a question and wanting to know, did you compensate participants that you worked with for the project? That's from uh, Rowan Light Willis. Um, I do everything that I can. Um, you know, uh, basically, uh, pre pre pandemic, um, you know, I always worked alone, and I, and, and, you you need to break the ice in some fashion, and I think that my age works for me, being seventy nine, and uh, talking to people that also look seventy nine but are fifty, uh, so it makes for for nice dialogue that people can relate to, but. Uh, uh, since the pandemic, I really can't do this. I have gone out, but when I wear a mask, I have, uh, uh, it's very hard to engage these people to the point where you can, you know, sort of try to capture them and, ca and catch something that shows their inside. And uh, Michael, I've photographed about six times and I still see him in Long Beach and all the people tonight I'm going to show are all from Long Beach. And uh, Susan Caffrey says, David, this work is breathtaking on every level. Mm -hmm. And uh, Amanda says she had the chance to meet you while she was painting a mural that you're an awesome photographer and a caring human. Oh, and, uh, oh Amanda from Maui. Okay. Wonderful. So did uh, any uh, people or anybody wearing masks during this time? Yeah, I saw one in the yeah, image, actually, but what was that like? Actually, uh, actually, uh, they they probably wore more masks than uh, in my neighborhood in Long Beach, uh, but um, uh, uh, but I I just like to mention Chris if I can. Uh, that, that he's on the screen there. He's six foot five, and uh, he would usually see me coming and he would start trembling with joy 
he was totally beside himself and he would blurt out, David, hug me, hold me, breaking into uncontrollable tears. And he had a nickname on the street as Crying Chris and he slept on a blanket on concrete, no shopping cart, just basics. He was always alone. I've helped him many times. And he finally got into, uh, during COVID, the first few weeks of COVID, he got into room key. And in less than two weeks, they found him dead in his room. So great, great guy. I, I, I can't tell you how close I was to, to Chris, but uh, um, you know, I'll see him again down the road. Chris Hamilton, rest in peace. David, do you get to know their stories? Do you, you do you learn like where they've come from and how they ended up here? Uh, well, I actually, uh, uh, when I first started doing this a little over four years ago, I, I, I kept the recorder and I recorded their stories. Mm -hmm. And, um, and, 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 Basically, I think to really do a good job of uh, recording the stories, uh, you know, it takes more than one person. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but yeah, I do know, I do ask the, those kind of questions. Uh, with Chris, Chris, he was, he was so hopeless that uh, there was not much to, to really talk about. And, um, um, we have another question from the audience. It's from mm -hmm. Peter Hertz. Um, he says, David, your stories of these people are compelling. Do you use, do you include these stories when you show the photos, when you've shown them in person in a gallery or any type of wall space, do you have their stories alongside? Yeah, I, I, I include the short version. Um, um, I did a book last year and, and, uh, uh, and and I included in that book an assortment of uh, people that I've photographed from Maui to to uh, Chicago to all through Southern California and and has detailed stories on all of them. Some of some of them it's just uh, kind of hit and run. Okay, like this guy here, Carl, who just pulled into town and was sitting outside of a liquor store and and. Uh, at you know 9 30 in the morning and uh he 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 wasn't a happy guy so uh, do you ever feel a little like you're you're threatened a little bit or they just or your demeanor your energy like you said in the originally but sometimes depending on their day it changes it's unpredictable there you know do you feel that well, that's a problem like uh, on Skid Row. If, you know, I always carry $1 bills in my right pocket and any heavy cash I have, I have over here, but I'm, I'm very free with the dollar bills. And, uh, and, and they, they kind of have a, a way of alerting people that I'm there and he's got money. And, uh, and it wasn't uncommon for maybe 40 people to, Kind of gang around me and then uh, yeah then you kind of get a little nervous or or i did a stint with mcdonald's where i where they'd give me a, a 150 coupons for a big mac and uh oh. and they'd come up and say i've got a sister and i got a brother and i got you know and and they start throwing bottle caps at me and oh. and uh but i when that happens and it does happen i just i just find my car I get in, I sit, and I just try to recompress, and I turn on Leonard Cohen, and just find myself. Right. And uh, this this gentleman just opens the door at the post office. He's got quite a little deal going because it's one of the ones that doesn't have an automatic door. And I've written to the post office like during COVID, the door should be open anyway. And and uh, the worst thing that you can do is have to go to, and to the post office uh, during these times in my city in Long Beach. But 
very nice man, very smart. I think he's uh, in a, in a, off the street now. We have a couple of questions, uh, David. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Uh, Marta, Marta says, wait, is Marta the first one? We have a couple of questions here. It seems like a bunch came at one time. Yeah, our first question is from Roberta. Um, there we go. What inspired you? Yeah. Um, Debbie, do you want to read it? Sure. It says, uh, what inspired you to pursue the stories aside from the fact that they need to be told? Was there a specific catalyst? Wow, it just rips your heart out. Uh, you know, you, you know, I, 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 I go solo, and and uh, you can only go for about two, three hours, and then you've got to get back in your car and drive. And and it, it, it from day one, it's just kind of like this cannot be happening in in our country. And uh, and also, you don't see a lot of people like me. When you're on Skid Row, or 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 at the Orange County Riverbed, some of my friends from there, John Underwood, who's an amazing photographer, he's uh, with us tonight, and uh, uh, you know you, you you can't believe all this is happening, and and it's just really a case where these people, uh, you know, couldn't say the word no. I mean, in their relationships, in, in their jobs, a lot of people are six figures and and uh, now they have nothing. They couldn't say no, no to drugs. Right. Um, so mm -hmm. it's pretty common, the thread. This nice lady is sweet as can be. She had, uh, she had cancer of the jaw and what you're looking at are pieces from back of her leg and her butt and uh, other all pieces to put her back together, and she she's just as sweet as can be and uh, has a room and uh, uh, and and totally makes you feel good because you you just can't believe what you're looking at. But very very and handsome lady. You give each person. Do you sometimes give them a photograph that you've made of them so that oh, they. Yes. Yes, yes. Uh, um, uh, I even use mixed tiles, you know, so I get the little thing like that, and then they'll put it in their shopping cart and, you know, and do what they want to do with it. Nice. Mm -hmm. And we have another question from Rowan, who mm -hmm. is asking, um, has the film project helped you slash your collaborators connect to homelessness prevention programs or shelters in Long Beach? I missed that. How did the have, has the film project helped you and your collaborators connect with um, the homelessness prevention programs or shelters that exist in Long Beach? That's a very good question because we did, we did the film in order to show the mayor, show the people making these decisions what it's really like on the street. And it ties into what I said about lonely out there. There's nobody out there from the city. There, there's no other photographers. I'm, I'm glad I'm here tonight because of my age, I would love to have some young kids give it a shot. You know, maybe use a very unique camera or something or, or just their iPhone and see what they can do. But uh, because that's, that's, that's what we have to do is uh, as a, as a, as a, as somebody that can really help these people. Um, like here, this gentleman here is 24 years old. And this stands on the corner of PCH and went to Poly High School, his name's Calvin. I put him in there probably because I have a grandson in Chicago and his name's Calvin. So I kind of related to him like that. And, uh, you know, and also, uh, you know, the, I have two sons that have done wonderful things and and so I can really kind of motivate these people to think bigger, you know, and. Uh, Thank you, David. This is powerful work. We have wonderful statements we're going to save for you in the chat. Can you uh, we appreciate photograph? We, we appreciate what you do. Um, it, we need people like you to to show 
what what the rest of us maybe have a hard time looking at because it isn't an easy thing to do and some people can look and some some can't so we thank you for for what you're doing and and as ellen is saying can you please show us your your donated image and see what, what the, the winner uh, a raffle person oh, yeah. raffle winner will win this is uh this is a 20 by 30 uh picture of of a gentleman walks around with the USC sweatshirt on in Long Beach, his name's Stefan. He's only 47 years old. And if you look Whoa. at this guy, it just tears your heart out. But he is uh, what uh, they call a walkabout. And he doesn't have a shopping cart. He doesn't have a, a backpack. He just goes and he just walks and he'll, he does some dumpster diving and stuff, but he's got the same look on his face and uh, and it all it kind of relates to to Jesus and that's what Jesus did they tell me okay they he walked around and he didn't have anything and he just you know so they believe that they're entitled to their one square foot and and sometimes I get closer and if I if I stand uh, I had one guy once take a piece of cardboard like this set it down there and he said this is my space, okay? And don't penetrate my space. And it goes like this all the way up, okay? <laughs> so I have, a, I have a series on walkabouts and that's Stephen. Thank you so very much, David. We appreciate your presentation and your donation. And again, on the side we have, uh, if you'd like to, to donate and be a part of the app raffle, please do so. And Thank you. Uh, keep, keep putting your questions in. Uh, and, and we'll get to you. Um, we're, we're proud now and uh, very grateful to have Laura Belavica as our next presenter. She is a Latvian artist, filmmaker, architect, and shadow storyteller. She's also the founder of Connected Kind, the art vaccine. Laura lives in the quiet suburbs of Los Angeles with her three children, and the bravest moment of her career took place on March 14th. 2020, the day she first heard about the school closures due to COVID-19. Inspired by a sense of urgency and a bit of panic, of course, and a strong belief in the healing powers of art, kindness, and connection, she created Connected Kind. It's a nature art resilience movement that celebrates the unlimited potential of nature, kindness, imagination, and connection to not only survive but thrive in our fast-paced world of techno technological advancement, social distancing, and disconnection. Her droplets, which are drawings that you're going to see that are created by Connected Kind community, are spreading across the globe. And Laura has a great story to share as well with uh, another participant that we had last week, um, or last month, Peter, Peter Mertz, who's here. But Laura, please show us your work and what you've created with Connected Kind. And welcome. Well, welcome. Um, are we going through uh, the first run of the work? And then would yeah, you like me? We're going to show. Yeah. Thank you. And if everyone can mute themselves, if they're not present. And we're very happy to welcome Laura. Thank you very much for this wonderful and kind introduction. And um, my work really asks um, the question of how often do we really see the little things and appreciate the beauty in the mundane? 
and um, that's just right at your feet. And as I go through some of my work, I would like to take this opportunity and tell you my story about how these tiny little objects opened up a whole new world to me and continue to carry me through this um, challenging time. Because I think and I hope that it might inspire you to see um, your world with new eyes as well. Uh, I'm a world builder. Uh, I'm an architect trained in the United States. Um, um, I also became an illustrator. I've illustrated children's books uh, and I'm making a documentary as well. Uh, and since 2016, I've been photographing found natural objects in their context uh, with natural light. And then I cut them out um, along with their shadows and simply play and imagine and respond. And the shadow is really the key that unlocks the interpretation of it. And I'm very um, fortunate to be living in California where the magic hour really yields these incredible shadows. And I'm also interested in the symbolism of the shadow and what, um, it really hides within and how it allows us to, if we embrace it, allows for new interpretations. So what I call myself is a shadow storyteller because I listen to these objects. I, I call them my cast and crew and they tell me their stories and the possibilities are endless. It's not that I look for a certain interpretation. Um, I never know what it will yield or what they will tell me only after cutting them out, only after looking at them, I really um, find something. Um, but just to go back um, to how this all started, um, after graduation, um, uh, after I graduated architecture school, uh, I ended up in China um, designing um, buildings and working on um, in a very intense uh, creative field where it was like a playground. Um, we were able to come up with crazy ideas and, and execute them, see them built. And um, that's also where my two children were born. So I joke, I say that my children were made in China. And um, after um, 2016, when we decided to move back to Los Angeles where my husband's prom, I found myself um, settling in a very quiet, sleepy, beautiful, natural um, town of Los Angeles um, called Thousand Oaks. And this is a branch of a thousand uh, of, of an oak tree or a little clump of leaves that just um, I found on my on my driveway one morning. And it really became this creative quarantine because after a very intense career in corporate architecture world where I designed and pitched projects and concepts to the mayor of the town, I was, um, I, I was a mom, I, was, I just had another baby and I was able to um, create and explore new worlds because of this art. It really um, captured my imagination and allowed me to channel my uh, creativity in a completely new way, unexpected new way. This is a onion skin I found in a parking lot in front of a Mexican restaurant and I photographed it on top of my car. And what happened was that as I was committed, committing myself to doing two drawings a day from the same object, I was what I didn't realize is that I actually was just uh, healing. I was, I was uh, meditating. I, it took a, while, a long time to cut the, them out, but I also created a sense or a space for me to um, uh, do an art therapy on myself. And it also created a body of work that then um, became um, 
it introduced me to other people that appreciated it and and were able to connect with me because of of um, understanding what it was and what it was um, about. Uh, but apart from all the recognition and opportunities in the art world, it also brought me a really unexpected gift. And this is where the, twi the story twists. Seeing their mother draw around natural objects every day, my children became very curious about the process and they would continuously bring me new, new objects. And then they would ask me to try and do the same kind of drawing. And this is when I realized that their mom is not really a, as special as she thought she was, because I realized that the children are naturally very, very good at this type of drawing. And as I started to watch them do it more and more, I also started to teach other children. And then I saw their parents uh, give it a try and they had this grin on their face when they did. And it would be such a joy of me, for me to watch them um, come to life and tell me that they've never drawn as adults, but that they enjoyed this process. And so when COVID hit the world and kind of cut us all out from our natural environment, I felt like I have been in this situation before. It felt strangely familiar because I had I realized I have had been in my own quarantine of sorts. And so I was ready to, um, I was ready to um, help, to step up and say, because it helped me, I believe now is the time for me to offer this as a gift to other people because I felt like COVID was, cutting us out in the same way I was cutting these objects out from their context and allowing by allowing us to reimagine what else it could be. I felt that we would have this uh, opportunity to see ourselves in a new way. And that's what um, the crisis was asking us uh, to do anyways. So I created um, a movement and I called it Connected Kind because I felt that as the droplets of the virus were spreading fear, we needed to spread the positivity and connection and create a completely different ocean of, of, um, of um, kind connection between people as we were disconnected, as we were separated from each other. And so three months after, after um, sending out a PDF of 12 shadow cutouts, I was contacted by a professor in Japan who had implemented it in academic setting with his students. And he told me that it created an oasis among their um, group because it was something that they would start their week with and everyone kept enjoying creating from the same object. And it really, uh, by finding me, um, they gave me another gift. I, I realized that I had found my purpose. My personal artwork became my training for this larger mission to bring um, this type of drawing to, um, to the world. This professor turned out to be also one of five jury members for um, UNESCO Education Prize for Sustainable Development. And he became um, a, such, such a um, um, champion of this movement that he um, is now working to um, bring this methodology to UNESCO's education uh, for sustainable development because he thinks that this type of um, um, drawing actually brings people closer to nature and we cannot really appreciate nature if we don't see it, if we don't understand it. And for me, what really is the most powerful thing is that is this idea that art can connect people and that we all are artists and it's the artist that 
ultimately right now in this crazy world can somehow think outside the box and find and question um, what is worth fighting for and standing up for that. And I want to thank Pasadena Photography Arts for connecting me with all of you. And I also would like to highlight an example of this specific connection and how that again um, can um, result in something. After watching Open Show 1 and seeing the work of Peter Mertz, where he photographs art program participants in California prisons, I reached out to him and I told him about Connected Kind. And he said when we spoke that I, that I talk about art the way that people at the Prison Arts Collective talk. And we reconnected, he introduced me to them and now I'm honored to be part of the um, arts program for Cal in Californian prisons. And I find that to be extremely powerful um, uh, and symbolic um, that we are using shadows and doing something with, with them. And, and I think it's in incredibly important that we, that we remember that no matter where we are in life and no matter what kind of shadows we have or what the context is, that we always, always have a choice in how we see it and what we do with it and how we uh, move forward. And that's where I hope that you can, that where you can get inspired to do the same. And I welcome you and, and, and invite you to join me in um, connected kind uh, movement and, and creating droplets if you can't, uh, go to connectedkind.com website and leave your email. Um, you should get a PDF drawing uh, pamphlet in your email and and please share it and draw and um, and be inspired to think about your world in in a new light. Laura, you are so very inspiring, and that is why you're here. Uh, I I think that everybody can feel that energy that you're exuding. You're doing this out of just this moment of walking and being present. And I, I love how you connect it with we're calling connect, connected kind, and you mean humankind, right? When you say kind, connected humankind. Um, it is a meditative practice to walk in nature. And I love how you mentioned the idea uh, with UNESCO and how they're saying, bring people back into nature, to see nature, to become more present and still in the moment, to have that calmness. When we've had such disarray, it's, we're, we're always so very busy to, to, to take that pause is hard for us sometimes when we're just going, going, going. Uh, I also wanted to mention how you, you mentioned this, the shadows and bringing that out. Even, even more so working with the prisons and Peter uh, and the connection. It, it really is the more that we, we, we do what we love without the barriers, the more that it will come back and then continue to go. It's like, and then, and then, and then, and then. And so I, I wanna thank you for touching people Everyone here is is doing that in one way and just by showing up. And I would ask one question: When you're cutting, you know, you're you're taking a photograph. We'll get to the technical part right now. When as for photography, you're 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 collecting these images and you're only photographing them right where they are, unless you moved it to the car and then you take that file, you print it out and cut it. Is that what you're doing? I. Um keep it in my um, in my iPad and I use procreate so all these drawings are actually done with my finger on a, on a tablet ah. digital work and when you make two a day sorry Ellen oh I just want to make sure that we sh we show everybody a photograph the photograph that you're going to give in the raffle uh, it's um, a print of one of my um, drawings. Um, it's called On the Move. And it's, uh, it's a girl with a backpack uh, created from a stick and, and the shadow of the stick. 
and um, I found the stick on the ground in the park in Latvia and um, shot the photo um, in magic hour. And that's a very, not the, it's a much harder thing to do in Latvia um, because the light comes and goes very quickly in the summer. And for everyone who wants to do it themselves, uh, the link to her website is in the chat um, and the PDF is free. You just have to put in your email and like she said, it will get emailed to you. So, on we have a, a yeah. quick message. I'll just say from, from Susan, so you get a, get a little love because I know Susan's all about that. Uh, Susan uh, Coffer Carey. Laura, this is such an enchanting project that reminds us that everything is dependent on our interpretation. Thank you for reminding us to see the magic in the mundane. With this art, you are changing the world. How do you see this work growing in the world? And on a technical level, how do you draw and uh, with such detail and precision with your finger on an iPad? <laughs> it's, the, the, it's the wonders of technology. Um, I recommend I recommend Procreate. It's an magic, magical tool. You can really zoom in very, very, very um, closely and and the brushes you can pick um, from big to small, and it's a very easy, an, an, an easy, easy tool to 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 pick up and learn. Um, where I see connected kind, um, because of what I saw, how it affected my children, and uh, I mean, I saw a change in their the way they noticed, the way they um looked at the world the way they problem solved uh, i mean my four-year-old right now goes around and he when he finds a stick on the ground he does not just simply see a stick he sees a possibility for an art project and uh, what i what inspires me is to to think about our new generation and how technology is is um kind of numbing their brain and how much how important it is that we prepare our, um, how we prepare people to face the fact that uh, AI and and just in general the world the speed will not um, will not uh, wait for us, and only visionaries and people who are able to question status quo, us artists, uh, will be able to um, stand up to this to this uh, trend. Uh, education itself also is in a way obsolete if we're preparing people for some specific economic role or a box, because by the time they reach um, that age where they can, their skill set might not even apply. So it's really about practicing innovation and mindfulness and problem solving. And I really, what I understand now is that what I have stumbled upon that actually was saved me and my life is now applicable to completely new um, and it has a bigger role. And what I really want to do is I want, want to bring it to um, uh, as many people as possible. And I'm really so fortunate that I'm able that someone like this person in Japan who is um, an expert in alternative education sees the potential of this, and um, and I'm also I also realize that we as artists we have a, a bigger mission now. We really need to step up and say um, that art is here to stay and is here to solve global problems, and it cannot just be about us. And that we have to look at it in a wider context and see the importance of us all joining and doing something about the problems uh, that we feel are important enough to uh, tackle. So th that's, that's, it's a very broad. <laughs> and very well said though, and, and it's very true and, and we applaud you and, and uh, let's all heed those beautiful words about art and keep going. and. I'm going to use that as a wonderful transition because our next artist, and thank you, Laura, our, our next artist is Matthew Finley. And Matthew also is 
working with nature and creating art. Uh, Matthew Finley, he strives to connect to the viewer on a personal and emotional level, while at the same time creating artistic images that are both authentic and beautiful. Based in Los Angeles, Matthew Finley has been a photographer for over 10 years and has recently joined the staff of the Los Angeles Center for Photography. His work has been shown in multiple galleries across the US and is in the permanent condition, condition the permanent collection of the Museum of Contemporary Photography, Columbia College, Chicago, and the Museum of Art and History in Lancaster, California, among others. His images have appeared in books, publications, including Oxford American, Shots Magazine, Lens Scratch, and Diffusion Annual. In fact, Matthew has a slight addiction to a number of shows on HGTV. I'm sure you're not alone in that, Matthew. And we're gonna take a look at your work in silence and then we'll hear from you. I'd like to welcome Matthew Finley. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to take a quick moment and thank everyone at the Pasadena Photography Arts and um, for putting on this event and, and making it so, so easy and so fun. And I want to thank everyone who came tonight as well for taking the time. I know we're bombarded with Zooms at this point, so I know it, it takes effort to, to do one that you don't have to do, and I really appreciate it. Um, and I love having watched everyone tonight. I love how some of the themes uh, are repeating and, and um, similar to uh, Laura that was just speaking. Um, my work is about nature and, and it comes, uh, this work in particular comes from when being at, stuck at home during lockdown and being in our little apartment here in LA for the first um, five or so months and you know not having really any outside area other than the crowded park you know a few blocks away to go to um, I was really starting to feel uh, really kind of depressed and and um, really feeling heavy and worn down after all of the uncertainty that we've been put through it by that point and um, out of the blue, uh, relatives that have a place in Colorado invited us to go. So I was uh, very excited about that. I threw together some photography stuff in hopes that I might be able to think of something to do. And when we got there and we went on, we started going on, you know, weekly hikes and everything, I was just, I was so, um, 
I was, it was such a release. It was such a, a, a refreshing um, feeling just to be out in nature and, and, and like a feeling that I almost feel like I've forgotten um, with all that was going on. And it, it, it was such a positive um, soul, you know, not to get too woo woo about it, but like soul cleansing thing just to, to be able to, to focus on the life and the vitality around me instead of the news. And um, I felt so refreshed and so joyful about being there at that moment. And, and you know, the, the, the antidote to what was going on for me that I wanted to create some work about it. And I had uh, taken some uh, little gels for, for like lighting and I, I had taken them up thinking maybe I would do some, try some night photography, you know, putting that in front of a flash or something. But I had this idea of putting it in front of the lens of my camera to play with, play with nature, to, to try to um, experiment and, and, and without necessarily a goal or a rigid, you know, idea of what I wanted to produce, I wanted to play. Um, so I started doing multiple exposures with the different colored gels in front of my lens. And it was, you know, lots of trial and error before I kind of developed a little bit of a understanding of how the layers, you know, laid together, how the color would affect, how the whites would be dominant. Um, but the rest of the time that we were able to be up there, every hike that we would go on, I would take my camera and my gels and just play and try to capture those moments that I was, you know, those moments of joy and, and, and um, just connection to something outside myself uh, in these images. And I, I share those with you in hopes that, you know, that they can take you outside of your head a little bit and, and take you to a, remind you of a, of a positiveness or at the very least encourage you to find some nature to go get lost in. I had started shooting the clouds and uh, eventually worked my way down to the trees. Um, Matthew, this is a particularly beautiful photograph. Um, what's, what's making that, like, I, I feel like I'm in the stars, the heavens. What's happening here? Uh, we went on a little bit of a, a drive and this is kind of on some cliffs looking down into a river. Uh, it's pretty far below us and it was a super windy day. So all of those, it's, it's the wind hitting the water and it's a multiple exposure of not only the river, but some of the like looking down the river, looking you know to the left of the river, down the river, to the right of the river, so they're overlapping a bit. It's it's beautiful. Did you feel this this catharsis that was happening as you were making the photographs, or did that take a while to set in? Um, I would say I felt it. I felt it before I started taking the photographs. I felt it almost as soon as we we got out in nature. I just felt, you know, my shoulders drop a bit. And I found myself not thinking about the situation that we were in, you know, the worldwide <laughs> pandemic that we were in the middle of and the uncertainty that that brought. I was able to, you know, just focus on the, the path in front of me through the forest. And um, it, was, it was that being able to focus and that feeling of connection that I wanted to try to capture in some way, in some positive way, because I, I just, so much of the thoughts, you know, that had been going around in my head were negative and worrisome. And I wanted to try to create something that was uh, positive and energetic and fun. Um, and it, even, even if it's mysterious, you know, that's okay too, because not all mystery is bad. So, that, that was my goal. And all of this work is done in camera. Yes, yes it is. I, I just to, to kind of show you a little example, 
I would take uh, little pieces I, of um, lighting gels. Uh, I had taken some up and then I ordered some more while I was up there, but, and just tape them together. And I would just hold them in front of my lens as I would shoot and move, you know, take one of the four, four shots. Most of the shots are between three and five. And I just move the lens or, or I'm sorry, move the gels or change the gels, you know, for a different color in between. So yeah, the, the only posts on these is just some um, contrast or, uh, you know, adding a little blacks or things like that, just to make the image pop a little bit more. Uh, but all of it was done, yeah, in camera. So I think that answers uh, Greg's question. And Granville says, these colors are beautiful. Makes me feel like you're capturing the aura of the landscape. Beautiful work. Uh, Camille Dudley asks, what type of camera you were just holding it up? Uh, Nikon, it's a, is it a Nikon D810? I'm sorry, yeah, 810. And what's interesting, and I didn't mention it um, when Laura was speaking, but it, you know, in Japan, they have something called sunbathing. I believe it's called sunbathing and where that is, you're actually going out into nature and or forest bathing, maybe it's forest bathing. That's what it is, thank you. And that's what, you know, they do, they take a break, go out and bring in nature, bring in the sun, bring in the earth. And you did this intuitively. And, uh, and now you get to share this beauty with us. Yeah, it was really, it was, a, I, I really look at it as a gift because I really didn't quite realize I needed it. You know, like I, like I, once I was there, I, I did, um, you know, and, and I've, we've been lucky enough to go there before, but I've never, you know, I've never felt kind of the connection to it that I did this time. And I, you know, I think that's in response to, to what was going on mentally and emotionally with where we were. And um, yeah, I really didn't want to leave. <laughs> I was like, no, I have to go back to LA. But. Well, you can do that in LA in a different way. I know you probably don't want to do the project in LA, but what it, I believe it, it has afforded you is a, a different practice to recognize what nature can do for you. Yeah, no, I, I definitely came, came away with it, you know, with a, a newfound understanding of you know, just how much it affects me, you know, personally and how much, how much I get out of it and how much more value I'm going to put on, you know, making an effort to get into nature for, for time, you know, as often as I can. It's interesting because, you know, psychologically, we don't like being told what to do. If somebody could say, hey, you know, go take a walk <laughs> and you're like, all right, all right. But you're choosing to do so. And uh, when we discover things on their own, they become far more powerful as well. And, but then you can still share it with people and, and show it by, by doing it this way. And I think uh, all of, all of you, the artists that are presenting today, and, and I think all of us here in one way or another are able to teach just by being who we are. And when we come from that authentic place uh, and from our hearts without blurting out something it's really just by our actions I remember my grandmother used to do that and so it's just something I want to pass on to all of you and, and to thank you all for being here tonight there's one more really wonderful question for Matthew John Underwood has said your work is reminiscent to me of the reverend reverend Disney artist Ev revered sorry revered Disney artist Evan Earl the way the colors pop and the landscape surreal are you influenced by his work? Um, I would like to say I am, and I'm going to look him up now. Uh, <laughs> so, so thank you for that. Uh, no, uh, I mean I'm 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 very uh, interested in in landscape photography, but I've never pursued it up to this point. Um, I'm more of a, in, in, so far, I've been more of a studio photographer working with, with people, um, bodies, nudes, uh, in that way. So when, when Corona hit, you know, that was shut down. Um, like a previous photographer said, that was, that was no longer an option. So a lot, of, a lot of this time has been, you know, just thinking about, well, 
you know, what else, what else sparks my interest? What else, else excites me? And, um, you know, this, this trip to Colorado definitely, definitely did that. And what wonderful photograph are you sharing with our viewers tonight if they donate or and help us through a PPA? Be, be I, have, I have this uh, uh, eight and a half by 11 uh, photograph shot looking up, looking up into the trees um, with the gels. It's, I think it's four exposures. It's beautiful. Thank you. Somebody Thank you. will be the lucky winner. If you haven't donated, donate now. Our callers are waiting by for your donations. Uh, we thank you all for being here so very much. Um, I, and, you know, actually, Bill, you had a question earlier. I don't know if it was for Gershon who it was. If you still have that question, please feel free. Uh, no, I'll pass. Okay. <laughs> well, just, we can um, have a quick recap um, before everyone says good night. So these are five of the works that were previously shared. Um, and they are all up for, if you, if we really, we really appreciate you being here. This is free, all of us are doing our thing and we'd like to bring as many artists to open show as possible. Um, there's just a little bit of cost that we have to carry. And so this, the donation from the artists giving their prints to help us help you and all of us share our work and be a community. We're very grateful for everybody here. So next time it's Doug Hill and we will have a forum and Debbie, this is your baby. <laughs> well, uh, Ann Wilkes Tucker is an amazing, um, person in uh, photography uh, and uh, we're very lucky to have her. She's not only an historian and uh, an author of numerous books, uh, she also uh, began the photo department uh, in Houston. And um, if you have a chance to see her speak, I highly recommend you do. She's a hot ticket uh, and um, we're really lucky and fortunate to have her. She's gonna be talking. Um, I don't have all of my notes in front of me. Uh, Mark Klett's book, Unseeing on Time. And uh, I'm really excited to have her here. So, so we hope you'll join us. We loved having you. I hope you had a wonderful evening with us. We love having you here. Thank you so much to all our artists. You are absolutely amazing. I'm more inspired than I have ever been before. Truly. And for everyone's comments who were not read aloud, we'll be sharing the chat with the artists themselves so they will be able to read all of your messages. But I think it'd be great to kind of sign off with this message from Susan Carey, who was talking to Matthew. And she says, this work is so peaceful in an unpeaceful time. I particularly love the image of the clouds that look simultaneously realistic with the white cloud and a holder of infinite possibilities with the rainbow cloud. Thank you. Thank you all so very, very much. We'll see you next time. And in two months, we'll do open show again. So keep, you know, if you haven't signed up, sign up so you can get information from us and know when you can submit yourselves and maybe you will be here and we We'd will love be to have you showing here. your work next time. We would love to do that. Bye everybody. Thanks again. Good night, everybody. Thank you. We appreciate you. I think A fell asleep. David will come back. Okay, yeah. Derek. So for, for all the artists who are still on, if you want to 
hang up and then in one minute come, come back. back we will celebrate we'll have a wrap up mm -hmm. so thank you everyone bye